G'day guys and welcome back to part number two of the run through of the 2150 Stabycraft. Now, last time we looked at all of the sort of exterior stuff, trailer, stone guards, all that sort of bits and pieces. Uh, this time we're gonna look at just the layout, some of the cool features that I feel that works really well, the cabin, um, and we'll go from there. So again, when you first look, it is a big space. That's what I wanted, nice big space. I didn't want it to be too crammed up. Now. As I was saying last time, I've had you know a fair few people on this boat, and I've had up to six guys. We've all been trying to fish, do bits and pieces. It worked, but it wasn't super comfortable. Two people, amazing. You could like have a great time on here with two people. Three people works really well. Four people works really well. Five people starting to get a little bit squashy because you start to find it hard to find a spot to fish, but you can do it. So again, it can easily fish up to probably five or six, but comfortably three or four, beautiful. Now, a couple of real key features I really like about this boat are just the way it's all set out. Now, as you can see, we've got nice, great big um, pockets down the side to fit your gaffs, all your bits and pieces, lots and lots of space there for things. But also, it's just the layout as well. I ended up just going just a, a straightforward, basic flat back, which was all good. This one has the, the live bait tank built into it, all plumbed in, fantastic to keep your baits and stuff fresh. And over here, you've got your other pocket for your batteries, which again, keeps everything nice and out of the way and dry. Now, the one thing that I did need to source was a bait board. Now, at the time, and you gotta remember, this was probably well over eight years ago, even probably nearly nine years ago, I was trying to find a bait board to work with the boat that went with the boat that looked okay and it was strong and solid. Now, I was doing a lot of, lot of research and for anyone who, uh, you know, switched on with their bait boards. This is an actual bar crusher bait board. And I just basically saw it. I went on to um, a couple of websites, checked them out. Then I actually saw one in person and I thought that would be perfect for this boat. And it does, it sits beautifully. So that's a bar crusher bait board, but it works a treat. Very strong, great bit of um, material. Now we come across here, we've got our deck wash again any sort of offshore boat or any sort of boat in general, a deck wash is a must. It's just so good just to clean things up. And especially, you know, after catching a tuna or something where it's bleeding out, it's just great to give the deck a quick wash and then it just keeps things going nice and well. And when you get home at night, you don't have to clean as much, which is a bonus. Now, under the deck, we've got a, a basically a, we've got a little sheet and piece of metal there. That covers up all your pumps, uh, all your valves, all that sort of stuff. So again, nice and easy to get to if you need to, and it's very, very accessible. When we move to here, we've got our kill bin on a gas strut, nice and easy, lifts up, shuts down. Inside this kill bin, there's a pump that sucks up all the rubbish, shoots it out the side. Very, very, very good for bleeding out fish. I did try when I first had it to use it like an esky, but because there's no insulation, the ice melt, melted pretty much instantly, lost it all. So now I bleed all my fish, get rid of all the rubbish and stuff, and then whack them in the eskies that I've got. It just keeps the fish a lot more fresh. Um, again, we've got some lights. Again, they're a standard thing, which is great. They're designed just to light up the, um, the bottom deck here. We have a look at the actual cab itself. It's a real nice setup, very solid. You've got your rod holders, nice solid hand grips when you are cruising along, holding them, but also you can hold on to here as well. Uh, we've just popped this light on. This lights up the whole deck really, really well. Again, use it when you're at night and then when you're sort of anchored and you don't need the light, turn it off. Uh, we've got our two um, seats. Again, these are the bolster seats. Fantastic, I love the way these seats work. Just, you know, you can sit down, chill out, cruise, or if it's a bit rough, you can just stand up against that and it's just a real easy way of driving. Now, when I'm cruising, I usually basically just do this. This is how I stand and drive because I like to see what I'm doing. I don't like to be set down too low because I feel like you don't want to miss anything just in case. Now, the cab itself, it's fully lined with carpet, so it makes it feel a bit more sort of warm and not so cold, I guess, but it's just, it feels a th like, yeah, it just feels solid, I guess, as well. Um, you know, we've got our Fusion speakers that are all um, in all the corners and our Fusion head unit, again, cranks really well. Um, and these holes are all pre-cut, which made it even easier. You've got your light, which is great. You've got your white light, you've got your red light, 
easy again just lights up the cab just enough for you, what you need if we um, bob down nice and low here you've got plenty of pockets to put all your bits and pieces or your gear and it's really really easy to get to you've got yourself a little window or a hatch sorry to get through if you want a little bit of air in but if you need to get up to the front quickly you can do at the very front there's a real easy access point to get to the ankle winch if you get a tangle simple easy the bunks they they're long enough for me again if i wanted to sleep in here i could but i haven't really done too many big overnighters but you can get an infill that fills in fantastic great little setup so if you do want to spend a few nights out maybe island hopping very 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 easily done and you'd be able to do it in comfort now if we just have a quick look at the dash there's a lot going on here so i won't go into too too much detail but first thing we've got we've got a lorance um, gps i like to have two going at the same time i've got my big garmin that runs the sonar but also like a, um, a gps setup too but i like to have two going at the same time just gives you a better idea of things and i like to have a big screen going i've got the two gmi 10 gauges they're all sort of connected with the, the motor all that sort of stuff and basically they tell you exactly what's happening with the motor it's telling you how many kilometers you're doing all that sort of stuff so very very handy to have especially when you are doing some offshore sort of trips to keep an idea of what's happening there um, you've got your stress-free anchor winch it's a, a necessity because in a day's fishing you can pull that anchor up 20 30 times depending on what sort of fishing you're doing and i feel for the people that have to still manually pull up a big anchor so these are fantastic um, we've got our vhf We've got our 27 meg double radios just in case. It's always good to have that extra, you know, little bit of um, support, I guess, just in case something happens. Now, we come underneath the cab and uh, out the back here, you've got the panel to get un, um, under the, the GPS. That's where all the wire is and all that. So very easy to access. So if anything does go wrong, you can have a quick look, see if there's a fuse or something that needs to be changed, but very, very easy to get to. Now. Like I said, I think overall, it's just a very well set out boat. I, I personally love it because I just think it's a stable platform. I can take you know anyone out and feel confident that they're not gonna feel scared. And if it does get a little bit blowy, you can get out of the way in the cab and you know you're gonna get home safe. So that's pretty much the rundown of the boat. Um, I might, you know, eventually do some little talks about all the gauges and all that sort of stuff in more detail, but overall, I just wanted to go through just the setup and how it's all sort of, you know, done, but I hope you enjoyed. Um, again, I apologize for the lack of uh, fishing that I've been doing, so maybe we should start calling this channel non-stop boating or non-stop, <laughs> I don't know. But um, I am keen to get back out. Just a little teaser though, I have been planning a big trip down the, um, the southeast, and we have got ourselves a couple of nice big game rods. Now, for anyone who knows what's down that sort of way, we're gonna be probably heading down Port McDonald, and this time of year, the big barrel bluefin are uh, sort of coming through. So we're hoping if we can get a, if we can line everything up nicely and we can get that weather, we're hoping to try and get this boy down there, have a crack, and who knows, we might be onto a bigger fish. But at the same time, it's about the adventure of trying to catch it. So, like I said, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, any questions or bits and pieces, please chuck them in the comments below and we can go from there and I can try and answer them for you. But thanks again, stay safe, stay warm because it's cold, nasty winter weather. But till next time, see you later, guys.